Hi, this is David of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of Alpha, or what is oftentimes called Hedge Fund Alpha. And I'd like to just illustrate that Alpha is really just the regression intercept. See right here, it's the intercept on the y-axis. Sometimes we make Alpha more difficult than it needs to be. My example is simple in the sense that it's a single factor model. So I've got a portfolio, and we can imagine that we're the active managers of the portfolio. And then instead of several factors, we're going to assume only a single factor, that is the benchmark, and the benchmark is going to be the overall market. So I made up some numbers over here, 10 periods. Here's the portfolio. Now we're the active managers, and by design, our average excess return is 4%. By excess return, I mean the return over the risk-free rate. I do that to keep this formula a little simpler. And then, now here's the single factor part. Our benchmark, in this case, to keep it simple, is the overall market. So think S&P 500 or S&P 1500 for that matter. And so our market excess returns, again, by design, average market excess return is 3%, and that's our benchmark. So if I take those numbers and put them on the scatter plot here, and then we look at the trend line, that's the OLS, Ordinary Least Squared Regression Line. Excel tells me, you can see here, that the slope is 1.1. Slope, recall, is rise over run. So the slope is telling us for every 1% here on increase benchmark excess return, we'd expect a 1.1% increase in the portfolio expected excess return. And then Excel is telling me that the intercept is 0.7%. So you can see that's where our regression line intercepts the y-axis. It's 0.7% here, and that's our alpha. In this case, specifically, it's the ex post or realized alpha. It's the intercept of the regression line. And hopefully the regression helps convey the visual interpretation here of what we mean. The 0.7% is the portion of the return that we cannot attribute to common factor exposure. So if we're up here with a portfolio excess return of say 6% on the red line, then most of that is due to our beta, that is to say our exposure to the benchmark. And then 0.7% of it, however, is due to alpha, which is going to be luck or skill, the portion that we can't explain by common factor or benchmark exposure. So if I look at my specific numbers here, again, excess return on my managed portfolio, our managed portfolio is 4%, market is 3%. Here's a calculation that I oftentimes see confused with alpha. It's the active return. It's real straightforward our portfolio outperformed the benchmark by 1%. You can see 4 minus 3 is 1%. That is not the alpha. That is just the active return. And the issue is that oftentimes we think beta is disguised as alpha. And so the 1% is just our outperformance, but it contains invariably some common factor exposure. So here's the calculation for alpha, or what we call residual return. Notice it's the portfolio return of 4% minus not the 3% market, but our beta multiplied by the benchmark. And in this case, that's 0.7%. That's telling us that we achieved a 4%, but 3.3 of it, 3.3% of it is due to our beta exposure of 1.1, leaving 0.7% to the alpha, the portion that we can't attribute to the beta exposure. So it really is residual. And so in the context of the simple example, I conclude with two final thoughts, just reminders here, that if this is our realized portfolio return, then the regression line, uh, the, the ordinary least squared regression or the regression is producing for us the beta coefficients and the residual or what's left over in the intercept and therefore what cannot be attributed to common factor exposure is going to be our alpha. And so the first thought is that my example is just single factor, but you can imagine we can add in, we can go beyond the univariate regression, add in other exposures to other factors make this a multivariate regression and it's still the same idea we'll have exposures to factors 
and then we'll have something left over that's the residual that we call the alpha. And so that'll be more realistic as we go multi-factors to multivariate. And then the second key idea here is notice my generic form. I do have the residual here in the alpha, but I've also got this error or noise. And without doing some significance testing, it's going to be very difficult for me to say which is the true intercept versus what is noise. And let me remap these. We could call this skill and we could call this luck. So just in observing the intercept, prima facie, it's hard for us to say how much of this is skill versus luck. The residual is the alpha, but the alpha, before we do any significance testing, includes the impact of both skill and luck. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.